Hello, this is Matthew Campagna from The Turning Gate, and today we're talking about the Core Elements 3 Web Publishing Suite for Lightroom. One of the things that is really cool about the new CE3 plugins is that they are responsive. A responsive design means that your web pages and your image galleries will adapt to fit whatever device on which they're being viewed. So whether your visitors are coming to your website on their desktop computers, their laptops, their tablets, their mobile phones, your content is always going to look and feel great, and they're going to have a great experience visiting your site, enjoying your images. So we're going to talk today about creating a responsive workspace in Lightroom. And what that allows you to do is, while you're in the web module designing your image galleries, you'll be able to fairly accurately preview how those galleries will appear on iPads, iPhones, Androids, and other modern devices at the same time that you're designing on your desktop display. To accomplish this, we're going to be using TTG CE3 Viewport Sizer, and this is a tool that you can download for free from our shop. We want to keep in mind, working in Lightroom, that we can use the F key to switch screen modes, and that will take us from full screen to windowed and back and forth. Uh, and before we jump into Lightroom, I need to run through some numbers with you. So bear with me for a moment. We're going to get into Lightroom shortly, and we're going to see how cool this stuff really is. So the first thing we want to remember is 360, and that is the maximum size of Lightroom's control panels on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the web module. 16 pixels is the width of the web preview's scroll bar, which is, is going to pop in when there's too much vertical content to fit into one screen. Uh, it seems insignificant, but we're going to use that number. 768 pixels is the width of an iPad when held in portrait orientation. And 320 pixels is the width of an iPhone when held in portrait orientation. And now some math. That 360 is the maximum size, but 350 is the size that we've designed the controls for, ideally in CE3. So right now I'm on a MacBook Air. It's a 13-inch display, kind of small for doing photo editing, working in Lightroom. Um, so I'm going to be able to scale those controls back to 350 pixels and be able to work comfortably. 784 pixels, that's the iPad width plus the scroll bar width, and that gives us the target that we want for our iPad workspace in Lightroom's preview. For the iPhone, we're also going to add the width of the iPhone to the scroll bar, and our target width there is 336. So now we have some numbers to work with in creating our workspace, so let's jump over to Lightroom. So here I am in the web module. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Layout Style, and I am going to choose TTG CE3 Viewport Sizer. And that loads up a white screen with some numbers on it. And what these do is it tells us the width of this space and the height. So we don't need to worry about the height. The number that we're going to be concerned with today is this width number, which right now is 864. So the first thing I'm going to do is collapse my left-hand panel because I don't need it. And I'm also going to get rid of this uh, bar at the top. You see where it says unsaved web gallery? That can cause us some problems. So we're going to hit the backspace key and get rid of it. I told you that the maximum size of a panel is 360 pixels and comfortable working size for CE3 is 350. So I'm going to pull that right hand panel all the way out. That takes me to 1000 here and from 360 to 350, 10 pixel difference. So I'm going to add 10 pixels back into my workspace. So I'm just going to drag that until I get 10 more pixels there. And then I'll let go. So now my right hand control bar or control panel is the ideal size for CE3. And I'm going to go ahead and create uh, the iPad workspace. So to do that, I'm going to hit the F key to go into windowed mode. And then I'm going to grab the left hand side of Lightroom and I'm going to reduce the size of the application until I get to that target width of 384 there in the preview. So there we go. Seven, sorry, 
384. 784 is the target width, and we have that here. So that's going to be the width of an iPad. Now I want to get the width of an iPhone. And our target width there was 334, 336. So I'm going to bring out this panel. That takes me to 524. I'm going to make it wider. I'm at 400. Still not small enough. But my left-hand side is at maximum width. There's a trick, though. If you're on a Mac, you can hold down the Option key. On Windows, I believe that's the Alt key. And then you can drag this thing beyond maximum width. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that in until I get down to 336. And there we go. That is going to be my iPhone workspace or my iPhone preview space. So let's go ahead and go back to full screen. Let's collapse that. And I am going to choose CE3 Gallery so that I can show you how this works. I've got some images in my film strip where it's going to wait a moment while they load and it renders us a preview. And there we go. That's a web gallery. So right now, uh, it's being viewed in a relatively small viewport. So this is what my gallery would look like in a, a small browser window. You can see I've got four columns across on my gallery. So on a wider screen, you can see it will go to five columns, again, because it's a responsive design. So the content of the page is going to adapt depending on the size of the viewport. So again, wide screen, I get five columns. In smaller viewports, I get four. Let's see what happens when we look at this on an iPad. And to do that, I'm going to hit the F key and go into my windowed view, which is now my iPad preview space. You can see that it's gone to square thumbnails and that my menu has collapsed. And now I can bring the whole thing out this way. And uh, I can look at my block content the same way. So that stuff collapses so it gets out of our way and stays nicely organized. And if I want to see how this is going to look on an iPhone, I just go ahead and I bring out that left control panel. So again, my menu is collapsed. My thumbnails have gone small and square. Now I told you before that this would be a fairly accurate preview. You can see that my logo is getting cut off at the top here, and that is because Lightroom 4 does not support the background sizing property. Uh, in a web browser, on an iPhone or on an iPad, this is not going to be a problem. Our logos, our, our identity plates, they will uh, adapt, they will resize, and they will fit in that space so that the entire thing can always be seen. But in Lightroom, it gets cut off because it doesn't support that property. So that is the responsive workspace, and you can use that to preview how your galleries and how your pages are going to look on mobile devices, even while you're here working in Lightroom on your desktop computer. So responsive design is one of the key new features in CE3. The Core Elements 3 framework will be available from theturninggate.net on March 3rd. Thank you very much.